and welcome back to another awesome video. Today we've got this 1950s Silvertone by Sears AM radio and it looks kind of plasticky and these knobs are plastic but this case is metal. This is a tube radio and I don't really know how to fix tube radios. Uh, there are a lot of awesome next level type channels like uh, Radio TV Phone Unut or Shango 66 that would know how to do how to actually fix this. But I can fix the one obvious problem which is the power cord has been cut off. Catalog number one. <laughs> this is not the original knob. Take that off. So I think this whole thing slides out if we just unscrew some screws. Wow. That is a dusty radio. Okay, so just cleaned off the dust a little bit here. Some of these capacitors look like they've got bubbles on them, but I can see where the power cord goes. So I just need to get the power cord in there. I got a an old extension cord, which I'm just gonna solder on in place of the power cord. I guess I can check these things, make sure they're not a dead short. Uh, there are some schematics on the inside of the case here. Okay, so that's the old crusty power cord. I don't, I don't listen to AM radio much, and uh, this is, you know, probably not the best quality AM radio. It was cheap at the time. All right, so there's one wire. The other wire goes through the, through the power switch, so we'll, we'll connect that, and then we'll see what happens. Boom. Oh, tubes are glowing. See the tubes lighting up on top there. Yeah, cut to the, what the GoPro sees. Oh, here, I hear that. See if we can get a station. Seems like the amplifier is working, but the radio part's not. And I watched one of the expert videos and one of the things he did was replace this. This is a electrolytic, I guess, three part filter capacitor. It's got a 40 and a 20 and a 20. And he replaced that with a 47 and 233 microfarads. So I'm gonna try that. And then some of these other paper capacitors that I can get to replace those with the metal film capacitors. Okay, so we just spent a few minutes sort of shotgunning some capacitors in here. Uh, we replaced this one, which is the big old filter capacitor, three-part with some electrolytics. This is the only one that was electrolytic. All these other ones were replaced with film capacitors, so we had Tiger capacitors. So we'll see what happens. Nothing but buzzing. What if this thing pops? I don't know. Let's see. I got a rubber screwdriver. Maybe this tube is dead. So no change after changing the capacitors. So one thing I did notice is of all the tubes in here, this is I guess got one, two, three, four tubes. This one up here is not getting warm. These are warming up. So found this one on eBay. This is a 12 SQ7 GT. So we'll see if this old Philco tube does any better than that one. I do see this one glowing more than the other. I don't think I saw it glowing before. Oh, we're getting something. We're getting static. I think this is the antenna. Let's see if I can... I think we might need a better antenna. Hang on. It's alive. What do you think? This is a baseball game. Yep. Five inches up out of the strike zone, and he offered at it and swung. Where is that baseball game? In his latest years or oldest years or old age, we might have expected that 45 years after the reconnaissance in Canaan, he... some news probably. That was a sermon. The Reds leading this one. If anybody knows what baseball game that is, leave a comment below. Commercial in Spanish. 
What we ended up doing is replace capacitors, replace this tube. I don't necessarily know that this tube was bad. Back when I was younger than you, you used to go into the local Kmart and there was a tube tester. You could plug the, the tubes in and check them. But, of course, they don't have the tube tester. They don't even have the local Kmart anymore. But uh, I have a Hobby Lobby. Yeah, they took over the dead Kmart. But, yeah, this is a, uh old radio. It used to be my dad's, your granddad's. I think, it, you know, it was his probably when he was like, I don't know, 11 years old or something. And we, this tube might not have been bad. I think the key was fiddling with this antenna. This is the second oldest piece of equipment I've ever worked on, the oldest being that, that old phone. So this is pretty old technology. Things started to switch from tubes to transistors in the 1960s. Have you learned that in school? You know, a transistor is very tiny compared to a big old tube, and it does the same thing. They had transistors and then integrated circuits. To know that they had transistors, it'd say transistor radio, but sometimes it would say solid state. So what solid state meant to the consumer is you could just turn it on. You don't have to wait for tubes to warm up. This, you have to wait for tubes to warm up. It doesn't take long. Wait, so wait, so the thing was just basically a circuit? Let's go get out that old Zenith radio and let's see if it says solid state on it. Hang on. It's a solid state radio. It doesn't have tubes, so it'll just come right on. Which is online at etim.org. And don't forget to check out our... Names in the town. Yeah. Toes tapping. Yeah, we got solid state technology and tube technology. Now, today in my own lifetime, they have a similar thing with hard drives. You know, you have solid state hard drives which are faster than spinning hard drives. We'll uh, just to close up here, and that's about it. And that's about it. See you next time for another awesome video. Bye. First up today, uh, we have a voicemail from one of our listeners in South Africa. Her name is Latibe. So I've been thinking. So it's an infield hit and a throwing error by India. That's the way it's scored. Contreras is on third, and a strike catches the inside half of the plate. A slider for strike one, one and one.